Hello friends, I am Dr. Vaseem Sheikh. In today's video, we will talk about composite manufacturing techniques in detail. Let us begin. First technique is hand layup. So tapes, mats or fiber or fabrics are laid on a mold. This mold should have the form of the part which you are making. So you are laying these tapes or mats on the mold. Then on top of it, you are putting raisins. Then after you have put the raisin, you are using some rollers to roll over these mats just to make sure that there is no porosity and there is evenness in the spread of the raisin. No porosity means the quality of the final part will be really very good without any pores inside it. Also when you use the roller, it will ensure that there is a good contact between the mat and the raisin after the rolling has been done properly, the part is kept for curing. So it is cured, that means it is just kept in open air or sometimes in some furnace just to cure. Curing means that it is kept for consolidation so it becomes hard. The main application where hand layup is used is for making a truck bodies or car bodies by fiberglass. The process is very slow, it is labor intensive, you need lots of work to be done. So you are taking up the roller and you are physically doing the work. Also these raisins which you are using, they emit lot of foul smell. So you always have to wear some equipment to protect your breathing so that you don't feel hazy or you don't feel dizzy. Next technique is spray up. In spray up, you are having some fiber sheets which are unwound from a roller and they are passed through a chopper where they are finely chopped and they are fed onto the mold. There is a handheld gun which sprays the resin on these chopped fiber which is there and it is a mechanized version of hand layup where you are using a spray to spray the resin and you are using chopper to chop the fiber and make sure that it is evenly distributed on the mold. Finally, you have the roller. The roller is rolled onto the fibers and the resin to make sure again that the porosity is not there, the material is not porous, even distribution of the fiber is there and you are making sure that the entire thing is properly consolidated before curing. After rolling the deposited material which is rolled is kept for curing at atmospheric condition. Next technique is filament winding. Filament winding is used to make tanks and castings which are hollow. Your fibers are wrapped on a mandrel or some sort of form and you know these tapes are unwound from a roller and then they are wound on these mandrel. As they are wrapped on the mandrel there is a hollow structure which is created internally. So before winding the filament on the mandrel, the filament itself can be dipped in a resin or after you have wound the filament, you can externally apply the resin on the mandrel. So in both cases, you are making sure that the resin is there on the mandrel. It is poured properly and the mandrel is completely covered with resin. After that, you make sure that you are keeping it for curing and finally, after it has been cured, you are removing the mandrel from the wounded filament and finally you are getting a hollow structure. Next technique is Pultrusion. This technique is used to form a simple shape which is having a constant cross section and a larger length. So again fiber or resin they are unwound then they are passed through the resin. After they are passed through the resin they go through a die. Now this die has to have a shape of the final component which you want or the cross section which you want. After it has passed through the dye, you are taking it on the other side where it is cured. Curing is done with the help of a heated chamber or some heating device because it is a continuous process. You want to make sure that the entire thing is heated very quickly and you are taking it on the other side. As it is coming out of the oven or some heated equipment, it is coming out from the other side, the material or the cross section, the material is completely cured and you are getting the final part. So it is a continuous process. How much length you want by the end of the cycle, you can cut the shape to that length and you can get a longer shape cross section of that particular thing. So pultrusion mainly is used to produce continuous material of longer size having same cross section. 
next technique is resin transfer molding so we are having a mold where we are transferring the resin in the mold so the mold is having an upper half and a lower half inside there is a mold cavity you are having different ports to pour in the resin from one side so before you close the mold you are putting these mats which are there which are the reinforcement inside the composite material so you are putting these reinforcement you are closing the mold from the top you are pouring the resin very quickly and it is you know like an injection molding you are injecting the resin from the top and you are getting near net shape component that means the component is as good as the final component after the curing is done you open the mold and you take your piece outside you take your component outside and you get the final component which you desire so you need to make the mold beforehand and making a mold is sometimes an expensive method but you can reuse the mold again and again to make many components another type of technique for making composite material is reaction injection molding here you have two chambers in one chamber there is resin in another chamber there is resin plus strands of glass or fibers which you want for the composite material to be made up of then these two resins and the fiber are brought together in one mixing chamber there they are mixed together and they are injected in the mold so we have to have a mold again the mold is closed you are injecting this resin and the fiber inside the mold after few seconds the mold cavity will cure the entire material which is there internally after curing we open the mold we take the piece outside this is called as reaction injection molding method of making composite material next technique is compression molding so we are compressing the component and making the final component out of it we have a lower die we have the upper die so when both the die is close we get the cavity which is there internally in the lower part of the die we are keeping the composite material like a pre form it is not the final form which we want so we are keeping it we are closing the die and applying some pressure on the die finally when we apply the pressure the pre form which is there it will take the shape of the mold after curing again we open the mold and we take the component out which we so we are compressing the mold and we are getting the final component there are many other techniques which are used for making metal matrix ceramic matrix and even polymer matrix but these are very common methods which are used for making composite material that is why from academic point of view i have discussed all these types of technique which are very commonly asked in the examination thanks for watching